Scientists have discovered how to turn ordinary fat cells into cells that burn calories. Scientists have found a way to transform white adipose tissue into another type of fat that, instead of storing energy in the body, burns fat to produce heat. This work could pave the way to new weight loss methods. Brown adipose tissue, also known as brown fat, is one of the two main types of fat found in humans and other mammals. Brown adipocytes, the cells that make up fat tissue, were initially thought to occur only in infants and hibernating mammals, but in recent years it has been discovered that adults also have brown fat. Its main function is to produce heat by burning calories, unlike white fat, also called yellow fat, whose main function is to store energy. Researchers have long thought that brown fat plays a key role in how quickly we can burn calories. It generates heat and prevents calories from being stored on our body as ordinary white fat. But there is a third type of fat, called beige fat, which is a combination of white and brown fat. In new research, scientists from the University of California, San Francisco have discovered how to turn regular white fat cells, which store calories, into beige fat cells, which burn them. The description and results of the research were published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation. So far, the prevailing view was that in order to produce beige adipocytes, one should start with stem cells. But UCSF researchers have shown that regular white fat cells can be converted to beige fat simply by inhibiting the production of a certain protein. A lot of people thought it wasn't feasible said Brian Feldman of UCSF, senior author of the study. We have shown not only that this approach works by turning white fat cells into beige fat cells, but also that the bar for this is not as high as we thought, he added. Liang Li and Feldman conducted a series of experiments on cultures of human and mouse cells genetically modified with a gene switch that they believe regulates the maintenance of our fat. By depriving mice of the transcription factor KLF15, they were able to transform white adipose tissue into its thermoregulatory type. The function of white adipose tissue what, is primarily to store energy, protect internal organs against injuries and provide thermal insulation. Brown adipose tissue bat, is structured differently. Its darker color is due to the large number of mitochondria. Its main function is to generate heat. There are also beige fat cells that combine the features of both of these. They burn energy and unlike brown fat cells, which grow in clusters, beige fat cells are embedded in white fat tissue. For most of our evolutionary history, this relative balance of watt and bat has served us well. Mature individuals of our species keep warm by using fat to fuel movement, while immobile newborns use a more passive form of temperature regulation. But modern times are characterized by high amounts of fat in the diet with limited mobility, which ends in greater storage of white fat, often to the detriment of our health. People can naturally turn white fat cells into beige fat cells in response to diet or a cold environment. Feldman, in turn, knew from his previous experiments that a protein called KLF15 played a role in the metabolism and functioning of fat cells. He and Lee studied how this protein functions in mice, which retain brown fat throughout their lives. They found that KLF15 was abundant in white fat cells compared to brown or beige fat cells. When they bred mice with white fat cells that lacked KLF15, the mice automatically transformed them from white to beige. Not only could fat cells switch from one form to another, but without the KLF15 protein, the default setting seemed to promote beige fat cells. In further research, 
KLF-15 was found to control the abundance of a receptor called ADRB1, which helps maintain energy balance. The researchers knew from previous research that stimulating a related receptor, ADRB3, caused weight loss in mice. However, human studies of drugs acting on this receptor have yielded disappointing results. Feldman believes drugs that target the ADRB1 receptor are more likely to be successful and may have significant advantages over new weight loss drugs that aim to suppress appetite and blood sugar levels. This approach would avoid side effects because the effect of the therapy would be limited only to fat deposits. In addition, the intervention would be long-lasting because fat cells are relatively long-lived. We're certainly not there yet, but we're close enough to clearly see how important these discoveries could be to treating obesity, Feldman said. The latest discovery of the Webb Telescope A planet that smells of rotten eggs The James Webb Space Telescope has revealed that the hot exoplanet HD 189733b, located just 64 light-years from Earth, has an atmosphere containing hydrogen sulfide, which means it probably smells like rotten eggs. Scientists using the James Webb Space Telescope have discovered that the exoplanet HD 189733b, known for extreme weather, contains hydrogen sulfide in its atmosphere, suggesting an odor reminiscent of rotten eggs. This discovery provides new insight into the formation and evolution of gas giants and their atmospheres beyond our solar system. The description and results of the new observations were published in the journal Nature. The extrasolar planet HD 189733b was discovered in 2005. It is classified as a hot Jupiter. They are a class of planets gas giants whose orbit is very close to their host star. Astronomers can observe it passing in front of its star, which allows them to study the planet's atmosphere. The lead author of the new study, Dr. Guang Guifu of Johns Hopkins University, described it as a benchmark planet for atmospheric characterization. This world is about 10% larger than Jupiter. It is in an orbit about 13 times closer to its star than Mercury's orbit around the Sunday. It only takes about two days to orbit the star. For this reason, the exoplanet experiences hellish temperatures exceeding 1000 degrees Celsius. In addition, there are strong winds blowing at speeds of over 8000 km per hour. Using the James Webb Space Telescope, Astronomers found hydrogen sulfide in the atmosphere of HD 189733b. Under Earth conditions, it is a toxic and flammable colorless gas emitted, among others, by, by decaying organic matter. If the nose could operate at 1000 degrees Celsius, the atmosphere would smell like rotten eggs, Fu said. The discovery shows that our models of planet formation are good enough to make accurate predictions. Hydrogen sulfide is an important molecule and we didn't know it could be found there. In fact, we predicted it would be there. We know it exists on Jupiter, but we haven't actually detected it outside the solar system, Fu said. In addition to detecting hydrogen sulfide and measuring the total sulfur content in the atmosphere of HD 189733b, Fu's team also detected water, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide there. Sulfur is a key element for building more complex molecules, and like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphates, scientists need to study it more closely to fully understand how planets form and what they are composed of, Fu said. The new observations also ruled out the presence of methane in the atmosphere of HD 189733b, 
disproving previous claims about the molecule's abundance. This also supports models that suggest methane would not survive on such a hot planet. Although hydrogen sulfide is one of the gases that indicate distant planets may be home to living organisms, scientists are not looking for life on this planet. First of all, it is too hot, but finding hydrogen sulfide is a step towards understanding how planets form. The team also measured the planet's metallicity. Astronomers define metals as all elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. Less massive ice giants like Neptune and Uranus contain more metals than gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn, the largest planets in the solar system. The higher metallicities suggest that Neptune and Uranus accumulated more ice, rocks, and other heavy elements compared to gases such as hydrogen and helium during early formation periods. Scientists are checking whether this correlation also applies to exoplanets.